Well, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday. Oh my goodness, happy Friday. It's Friday, July 31st. We're already going to be into August tomorrow. This year has just flown by. Faster the better at this point. <laughs> so welcome back to Coffee in the Word. I'm having iced tea this morning. Mmm. So with that, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And my hair is just, meh. Hope you're all doing well on this uh, fine Friday afternoon, or Friday morning. Let me get to the right page here. Uh, let's see, the psalmody this morning. Let me see what the writing is. It's Joseph of Arimathea. Okay. The psalmody this morning is uh, Psalm 80, verses uh, 14 through 19. Sorry, I've got kids running around. All right, as always, may God bless the reading of his word. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. And for the son whom you made strong for yourself, they have burned it with fire. They have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your face. But, but let your hand be on the man, on your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The new, t the uh, new testament, the Old Testament lesson this morning. Uh, we're back in First Samuel, verses sixteen. I mean, chapter sixteen, verses one through twenty-three. So here we go. The Lord said to Samuel, "How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go, and I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons." And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look, upon, look on his appearance, for on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Ab Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he, he was ruddy and had a beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. <clears throat> then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a harmful spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servant said to him, Behold now, a harmful spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is skillful in playing the lyre. 
And when the harmful spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will be well. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me a man who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence, and the Lord is with him. Therefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me David your son, who was with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey laden with bread and a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them by David uh, his son to Saul. <clears throat> and David came to Saul and entered his service. And Saul loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David remain in my service, for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the harmful spirit from God was upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the harmful spirit departed from him. I am really enjoying this story. Such good stuff in there. Uh, the New Testament lesson this morning, we're back in Acts. We're in Acts 25. We're going to go 13 through 27. Now when some days had passed, Agrippa, the king, and Bernice arrived at Caesarea and greeted Festus. And as they stayed there many days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man left prisoner by Felix, and when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priest and the elders of the Jews laid out their case against him, asking for a sentence of condemnation against him. And I answered them that it was not the custom of the Romans to give up anyone before the accused met the accusers face to face and had opportunity to make his defense concerning the charge laid against him. So when they came together, I made no delay, but on the next day took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they brought no charge in his case of such evils as I supposed. Rather, they had certain points of dispute and with, uh, with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who was dead, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Being at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wanted to go to Jerusalem and be tried there regarding them. But when Paul had appeared to be kept in custody, had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of the emperor, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, you will hear him. So on the next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp, and they entered the audience hall with the military tribunes, tribunes and the prominent men of the city. Then, at the command of Festus, Paul was brought in, and Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man about whom the whole Jewish people petitioned me, both in Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. But I found that he had done nothing deserving death, and he as himself appealed to the emperor. I decided to go ahead and send him, but I have nothing definite to write to my Lord about him. Therefore, I have brought him in before you all, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that, after we have examined him, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable in sending a prisoner not to indicate the charges against him. And this is the word of the Lord. Uh, read the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Merciful God, your servant Joseph of Arimathea prepared the body of our Lord and Savior for burial with reverence and godly fear and laid him in his own tomb. As we follow the example of Joseph, grant to us, your faithful people, that same grace and courage to love and serve Jesus with sincere devotion all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, there's a short paragraph uh, right after the prayer of the day on Joseph of Arimathea. I'd like to go ahead and, and, and read that. 
uh, a lot of times the prayers a uh, prayer of the day references the the next uh, the next thing so to maybe fully understand let me let me go ahead and read that this Joseph mentioned in all four Gospels came from a small village called Arimathea in the hill country of Judea he was a respected member of the Sanhedrin the Jewish religious council in Jerusalem he was presumably wealthy since he owned his own unused tomb in a garden not far from the site of Jesus' crucifixion. And that's referenced in Matthew 27, 60. And that Joseph, a man waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went to Pontius Pilate after the death of Jesus and asked for Jesus' body, Mark 15, 43. Along with Nicodemus, Joseph removed the body and placed it in the tomb, John 19, 38, 39. Their public devotion contrasted greatly to the, the fearfulness of the disciples who had abandoned Jesus. Ooh, let me read that again. Their public devotion contrasted greatly to the fearfulness of the disciples who had abandoned Jesus. Wow. All right. I will pick up tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. And I guess we'll see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word or Iced Tea in the Word. Uh, so with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And God bless, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.